This next story involves a sexist piece of shit. So if you are a little bit sensitive, maybe don't watch this part. What is up? It's David here back with another video. It's the first video since the big rebrand. Skinny Vegan Fitness is no more. Thank you for everybody who has been with me this whole time. Even though we did no fitness, we mainly focused on everything but fitness. You stuck with me and I really appreciate that. You're giving me so much support. We built this amazing platform and this amazing community. Thank you so, so much. Now it's time to move into a new chapter of my life, a new chapter of my life as an activist. From now on, the new name of the channel is David Rams. Welcome to David Rams. We're gonna be doing pretty much the same stuff as before. We're going to go in and double down on the content. We're going to double down on the videos, even more controversial videos. We're going to deal with topics that everybody else doesn't want to deal with. And you're going to get the same no bullshit mm. approach you've had from me all along. Today's Friday. So of course it's time for a five minute Friday. Nothing is changing there. The five minute Friday is going to keep coming. In this week's five minute Friday, we're going to go through some of the most interesting stories from the last week or so. We've got some really interesting stuff this week, some celebrity stuff. Before we dive into this week's five minute Friday, let me tell you about the new store. We've got some really cool V vegan t-shirts, merchandise, hoodies, all cool stuff like that with powerful, strong vegan animal rights messages. Everything's eco-friendly. Everything is, is made ethically and vegan. All the profits go to helping me and my activism, and helping me to help more animals. Check out the store. I'm sure you'll find something you like. Let's put five minutes on the clock. And let's start with this week's Five Minute Friday. On June 23rd, the Vegan Women's Summit is holding an event which is going to talk about the intersection between veganism and race, issues that people of color face with regards to veganism and how they're connected. This could be a really interesting way for us to connect with people in different areas, different communities, and to learn how to get them to go vegan. So I think this could be very useful for anyone who's trying to reach out to as many people as possible to bring the animal rights message to them. Do check that out. The link is in the description. You could sign up. I believe it's free. Don't miss it. Paul McCartney had his birthday recently. As part of his birthday wishes, he asked that people stop eating meat. This seems like a cool thing on the surface, but Paul McCartney's been vegetarian for a very, very long time now. He's still consuming dairy products, and I believe he's still eating eggs. My message back to Paul McCartney is, go vegan. <laughs> my birthday is coming up soon. My birthday is actually on Sunday. How about you go vegan for my birthday? Some interesting news coming out of North Carolina. The federal government there has just slammed down an ag gag law. If you don't know what an ag gag law is, basically laws put in place that stop people like myself, investigators, activists from going inside going undercover and exposing them. It also stops them from investigating anything and releasing any photos, any videos. If you do that, you get massive fines and even you could face jail time. The federal government of North Carolina just scrapped one of those laws that was put in place some years earlier. They said that it was unconstitutional and it violated the First Amendment to target animal rights activists specifically and stop them from speaking out. That's a really good news story. A lot of places in the USA and even around the world are starting to implement more of these laws. It's great that at least one place has decided, no, this is bullshit. Activists and New South Wales have teamed up with a zoo. Yeah, you didn't hear me wrong. That's exactly what's happened. They've teamed up with the zoo to save dolphins. The zoo and the animal rights activists have been going at it for a long time, fighting big disagreements, of course, because the activists are defending the animals. The zoo is breeding them and using them for money. And they have found the middle ground. They're going to create a sanctuary for the dolphins. They're going to section off an area of the marina in the coast nearby, and they're going to release the dolphins into that area so that they can be taken care of. Because they spent their whole life in captivity, they wouldn't be able to survive in the wild. They get eaten by a shark within days. This is a solution that gets them out of the zoo and out of that horrible a concrete walled pool and gets them into the sea. Everyone is happy. The dolphins are in a better position. The animal rights activists are, have defended the animals and they've got them out of the zoo. The zoo and the animal rights activists can work as one and help these animals. And that's what we all want at the end of the day. We want to help the animals and it's great that the zoo realized that they should also be helping these animals. This next story involves a sexist piece of shit. So if you are a little bit sensitive, maybe don't watch this part. Alicia Silverstone made a video with Mercy for Animals, defending the animals and talking about the chickens, what they do in these factories with the chickens and how they slaughter them. It was a good video, a good informative video. There was an article written about this on the, on the website whatagnet.com, written by some asshole called Roy Grabber, I'm telling you he's an asshole now because of what he said. He made some really sexist remarks aimed at Alicia Silverstone whilst simultaneously trying to debunk what she said and failing miserably. But his first uh, criticisms were about the video. So they were saying that the, the group should be ashamed and that whoever filmed this probably did so by not being truthful about who they were and why they were a poultry production facility, but there's one other thing. The video was really poorly produced, like as if any of this matters. A video titled N High Speed Cruelty features footage from a poultry facility, but it was not identified whose facility was filmed or where it was located. In a blog on the Mercy for Animals website, it only said the footage was shot in 2019 and the facility filmed was a supplier for Sam's Club. The gist of the film, as the name indicates, is to get people's emotions flowing and to encourage, encourage them to tell their senators and representatives that poultry plant line speeds are too fast. Oh, they didn't say where it was filmed or where it was located. They told you that who the supply... 
what they, this business was supplying. They shouldn't that give you a notification of, what, of where this business is based? The video was narrated by actress Alicia Silverstone, who has been an outspoken advocate for the animal rights movement. Objective. I'm not familiar with Silverstone's recent work, but she's probably best known for her roles in the, mo roles in the movies Clueless and The Crush, as well as appearing in an Aerosmith music video. Again, seems to be objective, okay? But here comes the bullshit. In all three roles, Silverstone characters may have been kind of nice to look at, but they were not people of much substance. So that's, yeah, a little bit, yeah, that's sexist, right? You, you, am I wrong here? Tell me if I'm right or wrong here. Is that, is that sexist to you? It feels a little bit sexist to me. It's like dismissing her based on roles she played, telling that she was nice to look at, but not much substance. To me, that sounds like something from the 50s, like someone would say in the 50s. I mean, I wasn't alive in the 50s, but I've watched movies. Or it's like your great granddad would say something like that, not knowing that this kind of stuff is not really accepted in today's world. This guy doesn't know that either. I don't think things have changed that much. In the Mercy for Animals video, it seems like Silverstone is still trying to work the eye candy angle, given her choice to wear a blouse that I wouldn't exactly describe as modest. So then he dives in and goes full sexist. It's not for him to determine what somebody else wears, especially what a woman wears and what she shouldn't wear, commenting on her like that. A disgusting sexist prick. The serious tone she speaks in comes as unconvincing and insincere. Special emphasis on words like agonizing and factory farm seems forced. Yeah, uh, of course you would say that. You're working within animal agriculture. You don't like to see the truth, right? You don't like to see what agony they're in. He goes on to say the footage itself is so dark. It's hard to get a grasp of what's happening. You can get a feel for the how the line speeds are, how fast the line speeds are, and it might seem like one worker maybe hanging chickens with more force than necessary, but with video editing technologies and animal rights groups' reputations for seeming to avoid honest and ethical behavior if it furthers their cause, some might wonder if the footage was sped up. This guy is an absolute idiot, basically. Sexist idiot. I wanted to just cover that and just show you this is that, again, the kind of stupid shit that these people are saying from the animal agriculture industry. This is an animal ag website and an animal ag article written by an animal ag idiot. This is the best they can do. They can comment on a woman's appearance, be act all sexist. They're doing themselves no favors, are they? We're on to the final story now and it is again about Lewis Hamilton. We talked about Lewis Hamilton a few weeks ago. I'll link that video up there now so you can check it out. He is an advocate for animal rights. He's a vegan. He uses his platform so responsibly. He gets important messages out to literally millions of people and now is no exception. One of the biggest bullfighters in Spain has come back at him. So let's see what the bullfighter has said to Lewis Hamilton to defend bullfighting. Lewis Hamilton has directly called for Spain to close bullfighting schools. That, that's one of his main points here that, that that's pissed a lot of people off. Lewis is exact words were, this is truly disgusting Spain. Kids in Spain are taught to torture and kill bulls starting at age 14. We're asking Spain's Ministry of Education to close bullfighting schools immediately. This Spanish bullfighter, his name is Cayetano Rivera, he has hit back at him with a tweet saying, Mr. Lewis Hamilton doesn't like bullfights, so? Anyways, before criticizing someone else's culture, you should at least learn more about what you're talking about. Hashtag respect and don't let Narvez fool you. I don't understand the last bit. It's always the same absolute crap, isn't it? The same nonsense. Don't criticize my culture. My culture is untouchable. People need to realize something being part of the culture does not render it free from criticism. You can criticize a religion that harms others, that harms animals. You can criticize a culture that harms others, that harms animals. You can criticize a tradition that harms others, that harms animals. They are all open to be criticized. By criticizing them, we defend the animals and they need defending. Culture is not an excuse to stab bulls, taunt bulls, and then kill them. It's absolutely disgraceful. This idea that culture is untouchable, we have to respect culture, we have to be tolerant of all cultures is absolute nonsense. There are harmless cultural differences that we should absolutely respect. I agree there, like take your shoes off, don't swear if somebody, that's in somebody's culture, don't blaspheme if somebody doesn't like you using God's name or Allah or Shiva if they don't want, like, want you to use those names in a negative context, then you don't do it. If that's the culture, then you deal with it. If you're in a country where they, where they want you to cover your knees and cover your shoulders at all times, you do it. It's a culture. It's not going to harm you. It doesn't hurt you to do that. But if, if your culture says, hey, you need to accept bullfighting, you need to accept that we do this to these bulls, or you need to accept that we kill these specific animals every year for this specific festival, that we use animals in this certain way that tortures them and kills them, then you say, no, fuck you. <laughs> you don't need to say fuck you, of course. You get my point though. Cultures need to be criticized. We need to speak out about them. Our own cultures, all cultures, and don't think that if you're in one culture, you can't criticize another culture. That's how cultures grow and change by others seeing things, criticizing, offering 
advice and they evolve from outside interactions. If none of us paid attention to anyone else's cultures, we'd all still be doing the same shit we were doing 200 years ago. We learn from each other, we communicate with each other. This is how we grow and how we change. Let me know in the comments down below right now, what did you think of these stories this week? Which one of them was the most interesting to you? Let me know in the comments before you leave. Moving forward, I want to make a big commitment to you and to the animals to keep on putting out top quality content about animal rights and veganism and keep getting the messages out as to as many people as possible. But I can't do it without your help. So if you do enjoy these videos, if you want to support me so I can do more videos like this, I'm going to be going out, interviewing people, doing really challenging, controversial actions, getting some really, really good stuff together. It's going to be really special. And if you can support that, then please do. You can do that by Patreon. Patreon is a platform where you can sign up to just give $1 a month as a minimum. And that might not seem a lot to you, but if 100 people do that, that's $100. And that's $100 that I can put to very good use in doing more of this important work for the animals. To everyone that already does support me on Patreon, thank you. I can't do this without you. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.